A few weeks back, I made a video about how I could fully squat if I had my sneakers on, but if I was barefoot, I couldn't fully squat. Actually, I could only, I couldn't even make it past parallel. And that got me thinking about my own feet and the fact that my left foot uh, and my right foot really are not the same. And I was told by uh, Dr. Paul Coffin, who is the podiatrist that PRI works with out in Nebraska for the orthotics. I was told by him when he looked at my left foot, he's like, oh, you have, this was a couple of years ago, he said, kind of casually, oh, you have some metatarsus adductus, which means this extra curve of the foot. And I'm showing you right now, you're going to see a picture of my left orthotic versus my right orthotic. And I actually just got these remade because, well, actually you're seeing here, they're just simply not the same. The right side and the left side simply don't look the same. The left foot looks a little bit more narrow. The right side is a little wider, but it, and you can't really tell, but the, the, le the arch of the left foot is just steeper. And on the right foot, uh, it's an, there's a, a definite arch, but it's just more a more normal arch. The left foot just has a really steep arch. Now, the difficulty is in determining when someone needs an orthotic or not. And I, it's from a PRI perspective, if someone simply cannot get neutral or they can't maintain neutrality, or they're still just, they can maintain neutrality, but they're just, you know, they're fighting this pain battle that it keeps coming and going. It's just things aren't regular. And as long as there's nothing, you know, up here going on, visual or dental, uh, they may want to try orthotics, but it's, an, it's, you know, a problem because they're not necessarily cheap and you don't want to get someone to get orthotics that don't need them. But on the other hand, they can't help either. So, I mean, they can't hurt either. They do help. Uh, they don't, they're not going to hurt because these orthotics that Dr. Paul Coffin makes are to restore proper movement of the foot. So he told me, uh, you know, these orthotics are made to make an abnormal foot normal again. And what can make a foot abnormal? Well, if you're born with something like I was with that left foot that just simply cannot pronate properly. And I know this because I could feel it. Even when I was squatting, uh, I could tell that as I squatted down, my left hip would move forward slightly. So I would, here's my left side. When I would squat down in that other video, I could feel that my left hip was a little bit unstable as I did it, and it would ride forward slightly. Now, what is that? That's the left AIC pattern. So that means, because both feet are in a state of pronation, that means when I, when I put my left foot down on the ground, heel strike, and the arch comes down into pronation, at that point, this left hip has to be held back long enough. Uh, if it comes forward prematurely, you're going to turn back to the right too quickly, and now you're back into that left AIC pattern. What it was showing me was, even though I probably test neutral, there's still a little bit of instability because of that extra curve, that extra arch to my left foot, that there's still a little bit too much instability through uh, through the femur and up into the pelvis. And when I squat, that's displayed. Now, I don't necessarily feel, my body feels fine, but I did notice that when I walk, if I want true internal rotation of that left leg and a pelvis that's staying positioned properly, I don't push through the big toe of my left foot. I can feel myself pushing through the second and third toe. Uh, and that makes a lot of sense because that I don't even remember which joint it is, but you know the first, the most distal joint of the big toe, and I can't remember, again, I can't, second, I don't remember what the heck, it's got a weird name, I can't remember the name of it. It doesn't bend all the way. Uh, my first metatarsal head does, I can bend that, it's just that tip doesn't bend properly. And I think because of this extra curve and the way my leg or my foot pushes off, it's putting improper pressure through that left foot, that left toe. And over the years and years and years of that, it started to get just uh, rigid. Uh, I think it's called uh, rigidus, <laughs> the Latin term, something rigidus. Uh, hallux rigidus, I believe, so big toe rigid, yeah. At any rate, how would I pronate my left leg or how would I pronate my left foot to compensate? I'd have to turn in order to push through the big toe, which I really wasn't doing anyway. 
I would have to turn my left foot out a little bit, which turns the left leg out a little bit, which turns the pelvis to the, to the right a little bit. So the only way I could pronate that left foot was through that left AIC pattern. And so I kind of wanted to fix that. So I got a new pair of uh, orthotics. And yes, they do make a difference. Uh, my squat is much more stable. I can drop down into it easily. My left hip does not ride forward. Uh, so that orthotic on the left side is making my foot into a normal foot again. So I can biomechanically move the way I need to move, uh, not only in the foot and the ankle, but also with the femur and the pelvis. So this left leg, the left leg doesn't have to turn out to push me forward. It can push through the big toe and my pelvis can stay stable until the last moment when I finally go back to the right side. But the important thing to remember is that that left foot pronation has to occur with a pelvis that's being held back via the left hamstring, left inner thigh, left glute medius, left abs, long enough so that you don't prematurely go back to the right side. My left foot, because the little structure of it, would not allow that to happen to 100% effectiveness. Uh, in order to push through the big toe, which you need to do as you step, my left leg has to turn out slightly if I don't have the orthotic in the shoe. Otherwise, I can't get my, my, my arch to come down into pronation, and then it can't resupinate and push as a, a stiff lever, okay? So I know that's kind of complicated, but I have other videos about it. The point being, I need that, that orthotic in that shoe to restore proper biomechanics not for support necessarily, because a lot of people think they're just for support. But the import that gives me the that gives me more grounding on the left side, appropriate grounding on the left side. So I just want to read two things to you. Uh, the one was a something a a, uh, a comment on one of the videos. Oh, actually, on the video that I mentioned before about the video with uh, that I encourage people to get proper shoes. And she wrote, Neil, thank you. Your video has prompted me to just buy a pair of freaking decent shoes. I had no idea I had high arches. I had no idea I couldn't feel the floor. I had no idea I had plantar fasciitis. I bought a pair of PRI recommended ASICs and holy smokes, my gait and walking standing stability improved dramatically in caps. I have joint hypermobility and naturally popped my right hip out really far to stabilize my supinated right foot. That's completely part of the pattern. Um, she goes on, uh, I, was bed, I was bed bound for over a decade with dysautonomia and dystonia down the right side. I was completely unable to walk and have been a wheelchair user for years. Forward, forward head posture, compressed cranial and vagus nerves, facial asymmetry, mast cell activation. My um, mass, I, I researched that a lot because that I was having these, uh, these breakouts, histamine issues, which I don't really have anymore. Um, my neural, uh, now you and PRI are getting me walking and moving like a human. I've made an appointment with a PRI PT locally in Atlanta. So she was able to find the ground with just a regular pair of sneakers. She might do better with orthotics, uh, but that's, that's the power of uh, finding the ground, sensing the ground appropriately through proper footwear. And by proper, proper, the proper shoes can be different for different people. It just, it, 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 it just means that your brain can now sense things more appropriately. And what happens is tension decreases and your body relaxes. And now all of these weird symptoms that people can have due to tension uh, can start to clear up a little bit. Now, I found two studies recently. Uh, one conclusion, I, don't, I didn't write down the names of the studies, but uh, one conclusion, the forefoot region, so the front of the foot, the, the ball of the foot, the forefoot region received a higher load during gait in people who had uh, general hypermobility syndrome. And she just said that she has um, hypermobility. So people with general hypermobility syndrome, people who are very flexible, they probably hyperextend their knees and their hips and their elbows, uh, their weight is more towards the forefoot Anyone with a straight leg raise of over 90 degrees 
on a pelvis that's in a pattern is not using their hamstrings. And when that happens, they feel their weight more towards the forefoot. And when you ask someone where they're feeling their weight, on the left side, they're usually feeling it towards the forefoot and the arch on the left foot, not towards the heel, towards the forefoot on the left side. Why? Because they, they're not using their left hamstring. That is the left AIC pattern. This is just, that's just standard, you know, introductory basic PRI. That left hamstring is insanely important. Uh, so this right here is saying people who have a, and this is gonna be even more so in people who have a straight leg raise on the left side that goes past 90, and if they are in a left AIC pattern, that means they're not, that, that's too much uh, range of motion. So, because their their pattern, their pelvis is patterned, they shouldn't have that, that much range of motion. It should stop at like 60 degrees, 70 degrees. If you're going past 90 and you know they're patterned with some, and who, someone who's hypermobile will probably be like that, that will be the, they will be like that. They desperately need heels and hamstrings. If they're not, if they're wearing like a minimalist shoe, they're not going to be getting that. Uh, so a good pair of shoes and perhaps orthotics is going to be good, could be good. I would likely be good for someone with hypermobility to help them find their hamstrings and start to ground them again. Otherwise, they're just going to be pulled forward and up and their neck is going to be overactive. Okay, so just remember that people with general hypermobility will feel their weight towards their forefeet. And they, which means they are not grounded whatsoever. Their body is literally falling forward and they have to arch their back to stay upright. So they need heels and hamstrings. And the other one was increased foot pronation compromises lower limb mechanics in the sagittal plane during the stance phase of gait. Increased foot pronation, increased foot pronation, the longer they're in, if they're in foot pronation for too long, is what they're saying, compromises lower limb mechanics in the sagittal plane. Now, that doesn't mean that pronation is bad. It just means if your foot is pronated too long and it doesn't resupinate for push off, that's a problem. Now, what do you usually find in the left AIC pattern? You find a foot on the left that's stuck in a pronated position and a foot on the right that's stuck in a supinated position. This is because the body has shifted to the right. That left foot needs to learn how to supinate at heel strike and then move into pronation. If that doesn't occur, if the foot is constantly in a state of pronation, it's unstable, which is good. Foot instability on the left or on the right is good at mid stance. So it's heel strike, rigid. Arch comes down into mid stance. It unlocks to adapt to uneven terrain, and then it locks up again to push you forward. If it's constantly unlocked and loose, you're going to have to tighten up further up through the, through the chain. And that's gonna to lead to overactive quads, overactive hip flexors, and probably overactive calves also. But more importantly, it's gonna drag you back into that left AIC pattern. So that's why in order to turn off that left AIC pattern, get that pelvis back on the left, you need a supinated left foot at heel strike. And that's what you're training. So even though a lot, a lot of techniques are have the left foot. Well, the left foot's always flat, but you're always bringing your attention to the left heel. So the foot is pronated. You're sensing the left heel, but the pelvis on top is being held back into into the left hip shift, and you're learning how to stabilize in that position. Uh, that doesn't mean pronation. You need to pronate, but you need to pronate the left foot from a supinated position. If your left foot never supinates and just stays pronation, 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 it's not really pronating, it's just stuck in a state of pronation, which means everything up top is gonna to have to stay tight to stabilize because that foot will be too loose. So everything has a place. Supination has a place, pronation has a place, resupination has a place, but they have to happen as a sequence while the other side of the body is doing the opposite thing. If you just try to address the left foot, Without, without taking into account what the right side of the body is doing or what everything up top is doing, you're not gonna have a whole lot of success. Um, but that is built into every PRI exercise. 